will be the rapture and then the end of uh and then the well that's happening essentially is what it would i would say that well, happens with the with i the do be, i do believe that the clear distinction in scripture with tribulation and wrath with the sun and moon going dark at the sixth seal and god's wrath beginning at the seventh seal followed by the trumpets and the vials after these things yes that what, what now what, give me that verse because that's that's what i'm going to focus on trying to do uh, i'll give you a better explanation okay when you it's study this in the timeline right when you study this more i've got it up on screen right now i believe strongly that this is the fatal blow to both the pre-trib rapture and then the post wrath rapture because again revelation 8 what do you have and when he had opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. This is after Revelation 7, after Revelation 6, which means it's after the seals. Notice the seals here. They correlate perfectly with the events in Matthew 24 leading up to the sun and moon going dark and leading up to Jesus Christ coming in the clouds to gather together as elect. What we don't see in Matthew 24 is hail and fire being cast upon the earth, mountain cast into the sea, burning stars falls upon the rivers, you know, the locusts out of hell, so on and so forth, because that's after the tribulation, that's after the sun and moon going dark. And that's what we see here, perfectly consistent, one could say a confirmed prediction because now we have the seventh seal being opened. But remember, the sixth seal was the sun and moon going dark. And in between the sixth and seventh seal, we had the great multitude that no man could number of all tongues, all nations, all kindreds. Clearly the rapture, the pre-tribulation rapturists want to say, oh, these are talking about tribulation saints. Tribulation saints, that's not found in the passage. This is a number that no man could number. If it was just tribulation yeah. saints, as in, you know, saints being killed, or martyr during the tribulation after we're raptured, as the pre-tribbers would say, that doesn't make any sense because you'd have a gradual accumulation of saints being appearing in heaven. But no, oh, this right. is instantaneously, right, Jamie? This is a great multitude that no man can number instantaneously appearing before the throne. That's why the question is asked in shock. Yeah. Where did these people come from? Because they just got here and coincidentally to the pre-tribbers, they have no case. It's right after the sun and moon going go dark. But then the problem with the post-wrath position is they don't acknowledge the fact that the trumpets and vials have not yet taken place because they don't happen until after this event, which is in Revelation 8. Notice this, Jamie, if you could, like, for example, Jamie, if you could just read out verse 2 right there on the screen what is that yeah say? yeah yeah and i saw the angels which stood before god and to them were given seven trumpets so you're saying you're saying look the seven trumpets don't start until the the last scene uh, open that's what you're saying right so you're saying this necessitates the beginning of the first trumpet of the seven starting after the seventh seal that's what you're saying right well i mean okay think about it what does it say and when he had what read that when he had um let's see where's that right there right here verse, what does this say verse two verse verse one. Oh yeah we opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven for the base of half an hour so, so so stop there so he opened the seventh seal now what and yeah I saw then, then the first yeah then then he sees seven angels before and, God and what was the and what was the sixth seal uh the sun the, and moon went dark right in revelation right. six right so if the right. seventh seal is now being opened well, seven comes after six. I don't Obviously. think I have to tell you that. Mm -hmm. Now, what does it say if you keep going down? Revelation 8. What does it say? Verse. Oh, this is amazing. I mean, this is amazing. Let's just read verse six. What does that say? And seven angels had the seven trumpets prepared to sound. So stop verse there. Six. Stop there. Prepared. What does that mean? They haven't yet sounded them. They're preparing to sound them. Oh, yeah. It's like, right, had, gotcha. it's like if I had a giant steak in front of me, my wife just put it in front of me, and I'm like, wow, you know, honey, this looks great. And I'm preparing myself to eat it. I haven't eaten it yet. And then what does it say? Verse 7. Read this. I mean, this is The first it. angel sounded, and there followed hail and fell with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees were burnt up, and all of the green grass was burnt up. So stop right there. So this is after the seventh seal, which means it's after the previous six. Now we have verse seven of Revelation eight, angel number one, sounding the trumpet. Sixth seal was sun and moon went dark. Matthew 24, sun and moon went dark. Jesus Christ came in the clouds after that. 
sun and moon go dark in Revelation 6. Great multitude appear in heaven, Revelation 7. Revelation 8, the first angel sounds his trumpet. But wait a minute. Revelation 7, which is before 8, read verse 3 down here. What does that say? Right here. So, uh, saying, heard not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till the, uh, we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So stop there. Do you not see how beautiful this is? Revelation 8, the first angel sounded the trumpet, hail and fire cast upon the earth to hurt the earth, sea, and trees. Right before Revelation 8 and Revelation 7, what is the angel saying? Wait a minute. You can't Wait do a it minute. Don't hurt the earth. Don't hurt the sea. Don't hurt the trees. In other words, don't sound the trumpet yet. Because <laughs> trumpet one is hail and fire being cast upon the earth. We can't do that yet. Because the servants of our God need to be sealed in their foreheads. So how in the world can you have the trumpet and vile judgments before the sun and moon go dark, which is seal number six. Right, it, right. I see what you're right? saying. I see what you're saying. You see yeah, it? Yeah. Because think about it. Would it be appropriate for the angel to say, don't hurt the earth, don't hurt the sea, don't hurt the trees, if hail and fire had already been cast upon the earth? Would that make any sense? No, no. The this. The chronology of this, um, the way those are associated, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. That requires an answer. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and, and that's, that's my main issue, is if the Bible's teaching a post-tribulation pre-wrath rapture, then we should just believe the Bible. I mean, look at Revelation 6. comes before 7. Obviously, it comes before 8. What does verse 17 say? After the, after the first five seals. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 7, the angel saying, don't hurt the earth, don't hurt the sea, don't hurt the, you know, the grass. Wait, but the, how, if it's great, if the great day of his wrath is come, this is before 7. <laughs> well, because the sun and moon go dark. We're raptured, right? And what does, what does the kings of the earth, the unbelieving world say? They say, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of who? The lamb. So here we go. Just like Matthew 24, the lamb. They see the lamb because he's come in the clouds to gather together his elect. And so the tribulation's over. Remember, after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven. You know Matthew 24. We're, we're gathered together. We're raptured. We're in heaven. Revelation 7 gives us the picture of heaven, right? Because Matthew 24, we're gathered from the earth. Uh, Revelation right. 7, where do we go? Well, we go to the throne. The great multitude appear before the throne. So yeah. verse 17 here, for the great day of his wrath is come in the sense that the tribulation's now over. We're raptured. And now what do we have? The great day of his wrath. But you got to continue into Revelation 7. And what does it say? It kind of zooms in again, right? So, because it's talking about the wrath, but it, but it's not literally before, for you know, what's told in chapter seven, kind of a little right. miniature picture. Well, there. It, it's basically like this. If I'm at the keg, well, here in Canada, we got this restaurant called the keg. We went there a couple of weeks ago. The best. Oh, yeah. Steak, I love the keg, bro. Yo, so, yeah. So, you know what's up. So, the keg's amazing. Got a nice big steak. Okay, so you know that feeling you get when you look over, you know, your 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 shoulder and yes. there's the waiter coming with, with your yeah. food. With okay, the well, bread. Yeah, that's great. I right. So, so your main course is here. It has now come. Well, it doesn't mean that I'm just right away going to dig in. Well, I want to say a prayer first, you know, maybe pour my glass a drink. And that's basically what this is saying is now that we've been, now that we've been raptured. A1. The great day of his wrath is now come. But it talks about there's silence in heaven for half an hour because the angels are preparing to sound the trumpets because what do they have to do? They have to seal the 144,000. You know, we're going to appear before the throne. And so, you know, there's about 30 minutes or so worth of things to do. But it's still appropriate to say the wrath of God is now here in the same way that, hey, my my food is here. Even though you know I might that, have to break, pray for it. If you break, I forget, I did this because I'm a weird, I'm like obsessed with numbers in my head, but I think a half an hour, if if you break down what percentage of a year a half an hour is, I think it's a week. Did you know that? I remember right. 
I did this in my head. I forget like, cause uh, if a day was a year, then, then a half an hour would be one forty eighth of it. So that would be, I think it's, I think it's a week on a lunar calendar. <laughs> anyway, sorry. No, no, no. That, that's okay. That's okay. So just a fun you know, fact. No. And you know, I, we just went down another uh, portion of that specific topic, but what I do want to go no, back. That's to good because that's what I want to focus on because I know, I right. know it, it was something like that, that you, uh, that you, well, you know, it, it's right. what I did my last three videos on two hours each. Right. You know, I, I put forth all this same information and I just haven't had any real scholarly response from the post wrath crowd. You know, that's all I'm not trying to be overly aggressive, but no, I know I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to address it directly and I'll, I'll probably do, uh, make some notes and then, uh, before we talk again, and then maybe lay out some more information just to help, uh, move along what the differences are, what the, if I, you know, I want to take it seriously. I just think, um, uh, I can't really speak to it properly without looking at it carefully here. And that, this helps a lot. So now that I'll, I can know where exactly to, to, to look, I see the issue you're raising here. So.